Well, appreciate everybody for coming and everything. Hi, Sheriff. Judge, how are you? I'm good. Um, what this is about, and some of the players I really needed here is not, but we're going to, we're going to get by. Uh, we wanted to have sort of somewhat of a uniform uh, message to tell people when they call and ask you, they're going to ask everybody. And uh, at this point right now, it's still, it's still more people wanting to help than it is wanting to help, needing to help. So that's still we're there. I'm assuming it will change as the days and weeks go by. But right now, it's everybody wanting to help. Um, and uh, come on in. Going in like that, I uh, appreciate everybody. I know most everybody, but if you don't care, go ahead and put, and uh, and uh, tell us who you are. Start with the sheriff, and then David, and then come on across. Hey, I'm Tracy Bailey. I'm the sheriff. Dustin Bratcher, I'm with the Ohio County Monitor. Athena Miner, Chief Nursing Officer at Ohio County Healthcare. Cece Robinson, Community Relations Director, Ohio County Healthcare. Santa Maria, Editor of the Ohio County Conference. Dawn Taylor. Um, I work at Ohio County Healthcare, but I just organized something on my own. Okay. And just Sounds great. Sounds great. Toby Rock, I um, uh, work at Ohio County Hospital and kind of doing some PR that way. And, and, and have a livestock show once in a while. And have a livestock show, yes, sir. <laughs> Nick Woolen, Ohio County Grove Floor. Tim Griffin, Chief Park Department. Georgina McKiff, just a volunteer. Uh, don't ever use just with volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't ever say just. You're only with volunteer because you are the key to our community and, and what we're doing right now and everything. Okay. Uh, I'm all right, Park Director. I'm David Johnston. Uh, I call this meeting, want to try to. And the, the, uh, the motive of this meeting is to try to get on the same page so we all sharing information that's pretty much straight to tell people who to go for what. And I will do the first one and then I will go on around on different questions. First two I'll do. If you're wanting to donate cash, if you, you see someone that's wanting to donate cash to the um, uh, tornado relief, they're to mail check to Beaver Dam Foundation Tornado Relief Fund, P.O. Box 408, Beaver Dam, Kentucky 42320. Or it can be delivered to the um, oh, uh, Beaver Dam City Hall or to the Ohio County Judge Executive's Office, and we will get it to the count. The foundation is set up. Requests for help will come the same order, same way. They'll go to the Beaver Dam Foundation um, Tornado Relief Fund. And if they're writing it in in person, it'll be P.O. Box 408, Beaver Dam, Kentucky 42320, or they can inquire at Beaver Dam City Hall or the uh, Ohio County Judge Executive's Office our formulas and exactly how we're going to distribute it is still on the table. We'll take some requests and just look at the requests and see if they're doable and and that's probably the it. Uh, we don't have it because of not knowing how much money we're going to get at this point. There's not even a cap set on what the request can be. Yes, sir. Yeah, I think it's a good idea, but I think it should be I think it would be best interest if you form a committee, which I probably know that you are, but it, it's already existing. So you do have a committee yes. set in place. Yes, but all the guidelines aren't there yet. And it is the Beaver Dam Foundation. It was already in type. Uh, Tracy uh, Sanditor is one of the board members, and they're going to be able to meet every day if, as needed to, to, to make sure that this is, goes out. Yes, ma'am. Uh, 
So, Judge, and, and I think I know what you're trying to say, Bo, is the ward is intact. Now, it was Tracy and Paul, Eric Taylor, and Giorgio Duval. Yes. And you, she wanted, remembered all of them. I only remember two of them. <laughs> And they, I think they wanted to disperse the funds, but maybe we're all going to look at an allocation committee yes. that yeah. would have county Well, we're, we're going to do some allocation yeah. guidelines. Yeah. And, and that's happening very quickly. Perfect. Um, and one thing is, the reason, reason uh, that hasn't been done already, we need to get an idea of what we're dealing with and what the needs are going to be. So, for example, if you had, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot big numbers out there. If we had a million dollars, and would we put the uh, request cap at uh, um, ten thousand dollars, or or fifteen, or whatever? Or if it's less money than that, we need to probably drop that cap down. So that's one hold up. So we'll probably start out with a lower cap, and then if the funds come in a whole lot, then we'll go. Um, this will be used for rent because you know people are, are temporarily uh, out of their homes and it will be for that, uh, be for that sort of thing. Uh, also another phone number I want to give you is, I mean a phone number I want to give you, that was the address, is the Red Cross, Rick Porter, 270-349-6879. And they are for more immediate, uh, for more immediate help. Um, have you had sent you that yet? Has he? Just no, he has raise your hand when they do. Uh, here's another resource for uh, anything that you think that there's a government um, relief for, including FEMA, but. The first number you call for FEMA will be giving you a little bit later. But Blake Edge or Jennifer Alvey, a grant has been assigned to this project and they're going to devote all the time they need to it. And their phone number is 270-926-4433. Um, can, can you repeat that name one more time? Jennifer Edge and who? I mean, no, Blake Edge. I mean, Blake Edge, I'm sorry. And Jennifer Alvey. So uh, those are some contact things that you need to know. Judge, when it comes to Brad, is that community members can contact them? Or yes. They, okay. Yes. Is anybody that's yes. open? Yes, anybody. To, okay. Anybody that has a question or a need, basically a need, I think, that, need, uh, that thought they were eligible for some, uh, um, for some FEMA funds that didn't get there quickly. FEMA is here evaluating things today, and they'll do some things on their own outreach, but people really won't want to wait that long so they can call these people to try to get some help quicker. Um, the uh, folks that are wanting to donate labor on cleanup, this will be more tightly uh, organized, but right now they're to call the emergency management office 270-298-4412. Was I talking too fast or you just didn't want to hear that? We're right. Hey, you, I said that last four digits one more time if you don't mind. 4412. By the way, I'm not trying to be sarcastic. I'm trying to be funny. So <laughs> please, please accept that. I was with the Lieutenant Governor Sunday and I told her, I, got, I made her a joke or two, and, and I said, it's, we're going to either have to cry or, or laugh one when you see all this bad stuff. Uh, one thing that she laughed at, I got a laugh out of her, was there's a mailbox over in all the brush there. I said, there's their mailbox. I hope they wasn't expecting a check tomorrow. <laughs> and she really thought that was funny. Um, Anybody wanting to uh, donate things, Georgina? Things? Be, uh, well, I'll, I'll let you expand on a little more specific. It's Georgina at the park. It's up to her. Do you want to leave? Give a phone number or you just say come to the park? They've been contacting me on the phone. But yeah, go to the park. 
We're usually staffed from seven to five. Well, do you want to give a, the park phone number? Or you want to get a different one? Oh, they better just do mine. I think they've been calling either way, uh, but you can do hers. I, I was asking for her permission to do yes, hers. Yes, you and can. Do hers first, and then the parks. And what's your number? Two seven zero seven seven five five eight eight four. Did y'all get that, everybody? That's Georgina Midkiff, and that is for both wanting to know that and needing it. And boy, she, the Walmart don't have as much stuff as she's got. And it's growing every minute. Yeah. So she, if anybody needs help, come out there. And uh, and, and it's, just, it's amazing how people have stepped up to help. Also, if people want to help that you're pretty sure they're not wanting to handle brush or debris, would you you'll be the ones to send them to as well yeah because we know if somebody just needs somebody with a metal detector or one of those magnetic right. rollers somebody that okay. senior sitter you know so send them to the, anyone like that goes to the park to georgina so uh i think uh i think i've uh, I'm, i think i'm ready for you guys to do things to make comments um I would like to share, uh, tell about, uh, I know there have been two or three reports where people thought there was looting going on, and then it ended up being someone just trying to help the people get their stuff gathered up. Is that? Yeah, we've had those, but we've also had some electric trucks that have been stolen from, some buildings out 231 North, and we're close to making an arrest on that. We're okay. back close. Uh, so yeah. that that's the only area that we've had that's been okay. bothered with theft. But we, we're trying to patrol those areas. Anywhere there's electric trucks and they're dropping the lines across the road, we're trying to be there for them to shut traffic down. We've been up at uh, Corey Brown's uh, up there trying to mm -hmm. slow traffic. That's really chaotic. People coming in now yes. helping and those power trucks trying to get the electric restored. Yeah. So. And that's very bad. I, I mean, it's awful and uh, um, it, it, terrible that they steal from the power company trying to put people's power back on. Yes, the thing about actually go to a home where someone's lost everything and try to pilfer and get a, whatever little belonging they might have left, that's a special kind of bad, you know? It's a special kind of bad, I think. Um, we need to put them on display in front of the courthouse when we catch them. No, we can't do that. I'm sorry. I, I know. Hey, I got. I understand. We're talking uh, philosophically. I do that a lot. I hope no one takes me seriously when I say things like that either. Can we delete that, Dustin? <laughs> Don't put that in the paper. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. We have had no requests for. Uh, uh, oh, Judge, one other thing, sorry to interrupt yes. you. No, We're go going ahead. to shop with the cop Saturday at Walmart, so any of those tornado victims that you all know of, uh, get in touch with me or, or some of my group. We're going to make an hour of that for just the victims of those tornadoes. Okay, and what hours is that? Uh, we'll start at 8 in the morning, but from uh, 10 to 11, we're going to do the victims, okay. just the victims of tornado. Okay, uh, totally. I've, I've been in contact with Wayland, Fordsville, uh, the high school, middle school, Western, mm -hmm. and got a name of all of the kids that lost homes. Okay. So I have that if you want to meet okay. with me afterwards. Yes, we'll do. Um, and then... Um, some things that they're maybe. Okay. Thanks. So the shot, the not the victim. What's that time frame again? Uh, for the I mean, the regular people. it needs to be scheduled with us so we'll know how many. But from 10 to 11 will just be for the victims of the tornado. But he's starting at 8. For the 8, 8 to 10. I think that's a good resource. Yeah. <laughs> you were looking at me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but my, there's my question because one of these families has a, um, has been taken care of by Toys for Tots, but Toys for Tots cannot do anybody over the age of 15. Okay. So we have some of these families that have 16-year-olds 
that they can't do anything for. Is that an issue with you? I need to check with Critchlow. I'm not sure what our age limit is in that. Uh, I mean, because they're still in we, school. But... We, we work off donations. So right. We've got X amount of money to use, and we're going to spend every dime of that. Okay. Uh, and probably could, I mean, if we come up with three or four left, we're going to make sure it happens. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll check when we meet, and then I'll call and check on uh, an unusual thing I want to tell Nick about, or I thought it was, is uh, if somebody going to bring you a dump trailer, you go, but go behind your green truck, I believe is the only one you'll work on, it dump, a dump semi-trailer. It'll be long as long as you need it for this storm thing. Uh, Tracy's. We got a lot of people that's wanting resources and they can't, they can't store any of these things. Do you think the military would like surplus them out to uh, your establishment to maybe you get them back afterwards? I have, part. I have Connex boxes that we screen and I've probably got four or five of those. But my concern is if I let Bo Wright use one and then somebody else doesn't get that. I mean, I'm willing to do that. I just didn't know if the military. I, I doubt it. They, it's hard for us to get them, uh, but I, I could check I on that. I Terry Adams kept. came down and have something that he discussed, yeah. so it might be something to follow up with uh, maybe the governor's office. I'll see more resources. resources. Yeah, yeah, that's a, it's a federal. It comes to the yeah. federal side of the government. So all I'm doing is I'm helping people that don't have the basically open the doors back up sometime and I think we're shooting for January the first. But if we go to that max we might stretch it. it might go a little longer. Yeah. So um, that's but something that we're running. It can't be an indefinite about for supplies you're receiving to hand out or people need places to store store their, their stuff that they 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 are receiving and their personal belongings that they're salvaging up right now. So Athena just brought up you know the pods that you can a mobile pod you get yeah. and you know they're not cheap I, i've used them when i've moved between houses those could be filled with stuff and brought in and then left someplace you'd have to have a place to leave well, them I have a but that system. could maybe be something through the yeah. Foundation yeah. that he's, he's he's like can do from. that's right i yes. thought he said they were giving away those shipping containers just last week well that's probably they there's no telling how many is affected now and how many is they they Which gave out want. already yeah, that's what we the Secretary of State said. We would be glad, glad for those shipping containers to go there. Yeah, and we have a right here. Yeah, yeah. So those we can place, you guys. I mean, well, they do have a semi-trailer that was donated to emergency to management business, to store all this stuff that we've got right now. And I don't know if it's, it will probably fill it up. Uh, I've got a 53-foot semi-trailer. The door, it doesn't have a door on the back, but anybody that needs it, I mean, I'd be willing to let them use it or whatever, to, whatever time they need. Our goal was to kind of drop the shipping containers at the properties, because these individuals are getting people to donate furniture and they ain't even got nowhere to put it. Now, I think with you all, with us being the county government, the ones that we have, we could bring them to you to store your items in that you're receiving. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that wouldn't be a problem if we could get maybe Nick and I know you all are swamped. I don't know how we would, we would get them yeah. to the park, but we'll see how far we go once we put all that in that Purdue trailer, 
and then we might reach out to see. Uh, let's see how much money we get in the Beaver Dam Foundation. It might be that we could rent some of those things, like you said, and put it to their houses for them upon their request. That might be the request they ask instead of rent, you know. So, uh, who's going to volunteer to check into them and see what they do cost? Well, Athena has pulled it up because it was her suggestion. And, and look, it looks like some of the big ones are maybe 250 a month. So, I mean, I bet that would be a great <clears throat> expense to come out of that beaver down, or out of the donations. And I think that maybe judges, you know me, I'm always into branding and terminology. People can get antsy when we call it beaver down, but it's the Ohio County Tornado well, Relief Fund. Well, here's why. There had to be a 501c3 yes. set up to hold it. And, and it was going to take weeks to set up one. Yes. This one's already in existence. Yes. But we were able to add tornado relief. Yes. Ohio County, because when it was explained to me by Paul, he said it was an Ohio County tornado relief and he won an allocation committee made up of representatives from all over Ohio County. And then the board would disperse the funds so that so it can make everybody back. is represented yeah. in the process and yeah, I we, thought I, that made me very comfortable right. well we had to have some place quick sure. to put the money and uh, a government account it's easy to put it in there not so easy to do that <laughs> uh, sure. and uh, so this foundation was already set up that's why we chose it we actually looked at two or three more things and it didn't didn't work that was probably our third go-to wasn't it uh, and of course, first someone said, "Oh, you can set up a nonprofit in a day." Well, no, you can't either. We reached out to our legal counsel and received back about three pages of what we would have to do in order to receive funds. So that's it why it's not, not called a, Ohio County. It is not. I mean, there's a lot of paperwork to make sure that it is done in a fair right. and equitable manner. Right. So that's that's the reason for that. But we'll get into the. Uh, right now, we've got to set up where we can take it. And we can sure about one to donate that we'll see that it's done fairly and go as far as it can go. But as far as actual, actual formula, we're going to have to work on that a little bit. We've got families that's coming to us that's like not insured on anything. They don't right. have insurance on the home, the vehicles. Mm -hmm. right. So will there be a difference when it comes to the families that were insured to the fullest? And yes, because the ones that are insured to the fullest needs more temporary help than the ones that didn't. Right. I mean, if it's insured fully, they may even have interim housing paid for by their insurance company. They won't need this. But I don't, I don't really see the people that sit here. I don't really see anybody stretching it. To get the. Am I really done? We've had people that their house was destroyed bringing stuff to us. You know that. Yeah. Has Ohio County been classified as a disaster by yes. FEMA? Because the first original, it was not. It was left off. Yes. It was oversight. And, Is and, it because and we didn't have, I, I was told it's because we didn't have a debt. That's that was the reason it was, yes. Well, aren't we fortunate? That's right. Uh, but we, so we will receive FEMA money, and we have been declared. Yes. FEMA is actually today in Ohio County yeah. doing assessments today. Um, that's the reason our uh, EMA director is not here. He's with FEMA. I'll send a message out to everybody once he gives me that number. And it's already on the uh, Ohio County Emergency Management webpage. It's also copied over on the fiscal court one. I just didn't have it here to give it out. Judge, I have a question on debris. Yes, sir. Uh, had a lot of people ask me about you know, the, the destroyed homes, I know they would be classified different than, than trees and limbs. Are there sites that they can take that to, to dump it, or are they to pile it at the home? Do you have any idea? Uh, this, all the details on that, uh, that rubble hasn't been uh, declared because we've got to see what people's insurance company will do and what the FEMA will do. The, uh, the landfill, have said they'll take it for uh, uh, for forty dollars a ton. Uh, we're hoping that it'll be better than that. And of course, any scrap metal, once anyone turns loose of that, I'm sure people will haul it. We, we can contact people that'll haul scrap metal off. And uh, we haven't got onto the private cleanup yet much at all. 
uh, where this worked on the roadways and people's driveways to get them into their property. You think FEMA will eventually come in and do some of that? Yes, they're, today, they're here today doing assessments. I truly do believe they will. Like they've done with the ice storm? Some, yes, I, I think so. I believe it will be. But I'm hoping that we'll get some other help on that too. Because if you remember there, um, they had to, the property owner had to remove their brush and debris to the road right away. Yeah. We hope it won't be there. Because not much of this is going to need heavy equipment to load. Yeah. One more thing that I, I was sitting there thinking about. I know we got people that's openly saying that they'll let, us, let people use their campers. If y'all find some families that need that, uh, we're not going to charge no rent for nothing of that sort. So, I hope you're okay with that, Judge. Yes. Yes, I am. So, um, if you just reach out and if you know them, because I know of at least three to four campers that's been, wouldn't you say, Georgina, that's offered? That's oh, offered. So, I mean, we'll take care of them when they come in. Yes. Now, I do have a question, because I'm new to all this. Like, I don't know how things need to be handled. When people call in to give a vehicle to any family, who needs to make a call on that? Or is that just something that we're checking I, I, around? At this moment now, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's you and your committee, your volunteers that's working with you will make that call. What we've been doing, yeah. It'll be you guys. Unless it's an old car, like old car. <laughs> But any other questions or, or information that I've left off that you guys know? Uh, if uh, some of this debris that's hard to remove, flighting it was struck and catch it on fire, what would that mean like? <laughs> he, he's not, he didn't even smile. <laughs> uh, that was for you, to, your amusement, and you <coughs> said nothing. As long as air quality, you don't get out of We're good. I'm, I've never seen anything. I seen a house on fire last night, and I just drove around. I've always seen hot dog roast. It was a there, that, hey, there you go. That's what <laughs> it was. Hot dogs under. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it was. Uh, but uh, I'm going to say one other thing, unless there's other questions, will be done. Um, and I say this anytime we get a chance. I'm just so happy to live in Ohio County, Kentucky. The generosity of the people here, all you guys here, and, and many others, it's just absolutely amazing. To the point, like I said, when you've got people that had lost so big themselves trying to help others, uh, and that's not one or two, that's several. And it's just, uh, it's just such a good place to live. Anybody else got anything else? The big purpose of this was to get these numbers out and to try to see if there was something I didn't know and, and you would tell me and some things you have. So I guess you I'm asking this question for you, which is already out there a lot, but all these information is like, can we, I guess it's time that we need to put all these on our social media sites. Absolutely. On our contact information. Absolutely. Um, and the resources. Well, and I don't know, but I was even given information where the Owensboro Hospital is able to give $1,000 to anyone that's with a nonprofit organization that's picking up even food for a family. So if yes. you've got 20 churches or something, so I don't know who's in charge of that or getting them the information right. to fill out the documents. Right. That's and just a good resource as well, $1,000. That's pretty darn good. Yeah. And uh, uh, as you know, uh, the uh, Purdue is still cooking for the volunteers every yes. day. And if and uh, if that got out, uh, the, the general manager for the McDonald's in this area said any organized uh, work group had to call him if he's out working. McDonald's would provide lunch Gary for him as well. Gary Druin's, Gary Druin's doing tomorrow okay. with 4-H, and then Chick Fil A Saturday. So. That's everybody. Everybody that's been hit, I think they're being taken care of. So right now we're trying to hit these volunteers and stuff. Too, yeah. So, which I think they cooked 500 plates to go around today. Today. So. And Saturday be 250. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. So if uh, 
Eminent Nails, thank you so much for coming.